I've met up with a lot of guys from Grindr and Scruff and Recon and OkCupid and Tinder and Field and And over the years I figured out what works better and worse for connecting with guys, getting conversations going, figuring out if we're a match, and making the leap to meeting up for a coffee or a drink or But first, hey there. If you don't already know me, my name is Brian G. Murphy. I'm an activist, educator, and certified relationship coach, and I'm here to help you build and sustain relationships that are fun and fulfilling. So if you wanna hook up or go on some dates, here's how you can knock your grinder game out of the park. We're gonna cover profile and pictures, how to get guys to talk with you, how to keep the conversation going, and how to make the jump to meeting up. But first, a word about mindset. You can use Grindr for all sorts of activities, from friends to hookups to dates. I made a video about how I met some of my best friends on Grindr. I will link to that down below. And so the first step is to get clear on what you want out of this. Are you looking for a hookup or are you looking for dates? Are you looking for an NSA type situation or a more Netflix and chill situation? If you're just looking to bone the first person who responds to you, then by all means, go ahead and blast all your nudes out to everyone who has checked off the accept uh, NSFW picks box. But if you're a bit more particular, whether that's for dates or even for hooking up, you're going to want to pay a little bit more attention to what you're putting out there. So you can definitely use Grindr with a blank profile and just one picture, but in general, it's a good idea to flesh out your profile so folks can get a better sense of who they are. It's going to attract people who you want to attract and it's gonna filter out folks that aren't interested in you anyway so that you don't have to waste your time. It's important to be clear about who you are and what you're looking for. If you can share something interesting about yourself, this is going to help others get to know about you and hook onto that. I also think it's a good idea to link to your social media profiles. This will help you establish more trust. They'll get to see how you interact with other people online, so they'll know that you're hopefully not a total weirdo. And if you link to your Instagram, they can see a bunch of other pictures. I know that like, it's really hard to judge a person off of like one or two pictures. And so giving people lots of options to see who you are in your natural environment is going to help them just get to know you better, faster. It's gonna make that conversation go a little bit easier. So pictures, how do you nail your grinder or Tinder pictures? The first most important thing is to have clear, high quality photos. Now I'm not talking about like professional headshots. I just mean like a good quality photo. If you have a phone that can run a grinder, you have a phone that can take high quality pictures. Like good line lighting, not super grainy, not blurry, like not a weird angle, just real regular pictures. I also think it's important to show your face. Unless you're looking specifically for an NSA anonymous type hookup, or there's like a real compelling reason why you can't show your face, like you're in the middle of a messy custody battle, uh, in which case maybe you should explain why you don't have a picture of your face on there. It's also good to include them in a variety of settings. Like a bathroom selfie can be kind of sexy, but if you just have five of them, I don't really have a sense of who you are. Uh, so indoor, outdoor, selfie, candids, uh, doing stuff, just hanging out. Mix it up so that people can really start to get a sense of your personality. And make sure you have at least one or two that you don't have sunglasses on, you're not wearing a hat, you're like not making a funny face, it's just you. Professional photos are okay, but make sure to also include some candids. We want to know that we're talking to a real person and not uh, an airbrushed character. Okay, so now it's time to start chatting at people. There's no wrong way to start a conversation on Grindr or Tinder. Don't let the haters get you down. Hello, how are you is a totally acceptable way to start the conversation. It's how you would start it if you were meeting someone at a party or a park or a bar. Uh, but if there is something in their profile that catches your attention that you relate to, go ahead and start the conversation talking about that. Forge that connection right away. This is why it is so important to have uh, some actual information in your own profile so that people who might want to be messaging you have something that they can hook onto and reach out to and say hello with. 
So you say hello and how are you and they respond and they ask how you're doing and you respond. Make sure you don't get trapped in this cycle of, hey, what's up? Not much. Good. How are you? Good. How are you? Back and forth. At some point, you're going to need to move the conversation beyond introductions. If you both have responded to each other, it means there's at least some sort of interest. And so the next step is to either talk about something in their profile, talk about something you saw on the social media, talk about plans that you have, or just ask if they wanna connect. It's okay to move the conversation as quickly or as slowly from chatting to in real life as you want to know. Talking about traffic or the weather or the broken subways in New York is tempting, um, but always be looking to learn more about their personality, their interests, what your values are, how you're gonna connect, what you're looking for, and then eventually it's time to meet up. Now it is time to actually meet up with this person. This is going to look different for every single person. And so the important thing for you is to figure out what you need to feel safe and comfortable and excited about meeting up with this person. So maybe that's a bunch of back and forth chatting to get to know them. Maybe it's meeting up in public first. Maybe it's hanging out at one of your places for a little bit of Netflix and chill to get to know each other, to ease into things first. Maybe it's explicitly discussing the specific acts that you're interested in. Maybe it's just diving in right away, NSA style, meet you at the door naked. Whatever it is, know what you want and need so that you can then go after and get that. At some point though, you're just gonna have to take the plunge. You're going to learn more in a few minutes of meeting up with someone IRL than you will after <laughs> days and weeks of chatting with someone online. And so just do it. If chemistry and connection are super important to you, make sure that you share that with the person and say that here are the like, you know, various things that I'm interested in that I might wanna do, but first and foremost, establishing that chemistry and connection is gonna be key before we decide to move on to anything else. I know that the apps can sometimes get a bad rap and some guys prefer to meet other guys at bars or parties or church or a kickball league or wherever. And if that's your jam, more power to you. But there's no shame in meeting up with people on Grindr, Scruff, any of the apps. I've met uh, two of my boyfriends online and so many of my good friends. And so it can be an amazing place as well. You know, for so long, gay folks have had to work so hard to find each other. And if the apps can make that a little bit easier, then I'm all for it. If you spend any time on Grindr or Scruff or even Tinder or OkCupid, you may notice that there are some guys on there that are already in a relationship, an open relationship. So I put together five tips on everything that you need to know to get started dating or hooking up with a guy who's in an open relationship. Go on with your bad self and get those cookies. Click on the video over there to see them and I will see you over there.